Naples' 2,800-year history has left it with a wealth of historical buildings and monuments, from medieval castles to classical ruins, and a wide range of culturally and historically significant sites nearby, including the Palace of Caserta and the Roman ruins of Pompeii and Herculaneum. The most prominent forms of architecture visible in present-day Naples are the medieval, Renaissance and Baroque styles. Naples has a total of 448 historical churches, making it one of the most Catholic cities in the world in terms of the number of places of worship. In 1995, the historic center of Naples was listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site, a United Nations program which aims to catalogue and conserve sites of outstanding cultural or natural importance to the common heritage of mankind. Naples is one of the most ancient cities in Europe, whose contemporary urban fabric preserves the elements of its long and eventful history. The rectangular grid layout of the ancient Greek foundation of Neapolis is still discernible and has indeed continued to provide the basic form for the present-day urban fabric of the historic center of Naples, one of the foremost Mediterranean port cities. From the Middle Ages to the 18th century, Naples was a focal point in terms of art and architecture, expressed in its ancient forts, the royal ensembles such as the Royal Palace of 1600, and the palaces and churches sponsored by the noble families. The main city square or piazza of the city is the Piazza del Plebiscito. Its construction was begun by the Bonapartist King Joachim Murat and finished by the Bourbon King Ferdinand IV. The piazza is bounded on the east by the Royal Palace and on the west by the Church of San Francesco di Paola, with the colonnades extending on both sides. Nearby is the Teatro di San Carlo, which is the oldest opera house in Italy. Directly across from San Carlo is Galleria Umberto, a shopping center and social hub. Naples is well known for its historic castles, the most ancient is Castel Delavo, which was built on the tiny islet of Megarides, where the original Cumaean colonists had founded the city. In Roman times the islet became part of Lucullus's villa and later it was the site to which the last Western Roman emperor, Romulus Augustulus, was exiled. It had also been the prison for Empress Constance between 1191 and 1192 after her being captured by Sicilians, and Conradine and Giovanna I of Naples before their executions. Castel Nuovo, also known as Moschio Angiino, is one of the city's foremost landmarks. It was built during the time of Charles I, the first king of Naples. Castel Nuovo has seen many notable historical events. For example, in 1294, Pope Celestine V resigned as pope in a hall of the castle, and following this Pope Boniface VIII was elected pope by the Cardinal Collegium before moving to Rome. Castel Capuano was built in the 12th century by William I, the son of Roger II of Sicily the first monarch of the Kingdom of Naples. It was expanded by Frederick II and became one of his royal palaces. Along its history the castle was the residence of many kings and queens. In the 16th century it became the Hall of Justice. Another Neapolitan castle is Castel Sant'Elmo, which was completed in 1329 and is built in the shape of a star. Its strategic position that overlooked the entire city made it the aim of various invaders. During the uprising of Masniello in 1647, the Spanish took refuge in San Telmo to escape the revolutionaries. The Carmen Castle, built in 1392 and highly modified in the 16th century by the Spanish, was demolished in 1906 to make room for the Via Marina, although two of the castle's towers remain as a monument. The Villiana Fort, which was built in 1702, was destroyed in 1799 during the Royalist War against the Parthenopean Republic, and is now abandoned and in ruin. Naples is widely known for its wealth of historical museums. The Naples National Archaeological Museum is one of the city's main museums, with one of the most extensive collections of artifacts of the Roman Empire in the world. It also houses many of the antiques unearthed at Pompeii and Herculaneum, as well as some artifacts from the Greek and Renaissance periods. Previously a Bourbon Palace, now a museum and art gallery, the Museo di Capodimonte is another museum of note. The gallery features paintings from the 13th to the 18th centuries, including major works by Simone Martini, Raphael, Titian, Caravaggio, El Greco, Giuseppe de Ribera and Luca Giordano. The royal apartments are furnished with antique 18th-century furniture and a collection of porcelain and majolica from the various royal residences. The famous Capodimonte porcelain factory once stood just adjacent to the palace. In front of the Royal Palace of Naples stands the Galleria Umberto I, which contains the Coral Jewelry Museum. Occupying a 19th-century palazzo renovated by the Portuguese architect Alvaro Siza, the Museo d'Arte Contemporanea Donna Regina features an enfilade procession of permanent installations by artists such as Francesco Clemente, Richard Serra, and Rebecca Horn. The 16th-century Palace of Roxella hosts the Palazzo dell'Arte Napoli, which contains the civic collections of art belonging to the city of Naples, and features temporary exhibits of art and culture. Palazzo Como, 
which dates from the 15th century, hosts the Museo Falangieri of Plastic Arts, created in 1883 by Gaetano Falangieri. Aside from the Piazza del Plebiscito, Naples has two other major public squares, the Piazza Dante and the Piazza dei Martiri. This was for the destitute and ill of the city, it also provided a self-sufficient community where the poor would live and work. Underneath Naples lies a series of caves and structures created by centuries of mining, and the city rests atop a major geothermal zone. There are also a number of ancient Greco-Roman reservoirs dug out from the soft tufo stone on which, and from which, much of the city is built. Approximately one kilometer of the many kilometers of tunnels under the city can be visited from the Napoli Sauterania, situated in the historic center of the city in Via dei Tribunali. This system of tunnels and cisterns underlies most of the city and lies approximately 30 meters below ground level. There are large catacombs in and around the city, and other landmarks such as the Piscina Mirabilis, the main cistern serving the Bay of Naples during Roman times. Several archaeological excavations are also present. They revealed in San Lorenzo Maggiore the Michelum of Naples, and in Santa Chiara, the biggest thermal complex of the city in Roman times. Of the various public parks in Naples, the most prominent are the Villa Comunale, which was built by the Bourbon King Ferdinand IV in the 1780s. The park was originally a royal garden, reserved for members of the royal family, but open to the public on special holidays. The Bosco di Capodimonte, the city's largest verdant space served as a royal hunting preserve, within the park there are a further 16 historic buildings including residences, lodges, churches as well as fountains, statues, orchards and woods. Various buildings inspired by the Gothic Revival are extant in Naples, due to the influence that this movement had on the Scottish Indian architect Lamont Young, one of the most active Neapolitan architects of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Young left a significant footprint in the cityscape and designed many urban projects, such as the city's first subway. In the first years of the 20th century, a local version of the Art Nouveau phenomenon, known as Liberty Napolitano, developed in the city, creating many buildings which still stand today. In 1935, the rationalist architect Luigi Cosenza created a new fish market for the city. During the Benito Mussolini era, the first structures of the city's service center were built, all in a rationalist functionalist style including the Palazzo del Post and the Pretura buildings.